Jackson Systems is your controls expert in the HVAC industry. With our top-notch technical support and customer service, we make life easier for you, the HVAC contractor. We offer free trainings on any products sold here at Jackson Systems, along with our filter fetch program, free thermostat and printing, home and business automation with connected sensors, cameras, and even smart stats from Nest, Ecobee, Honeywell, White Rogers, Google, and more. Visit us at jacksonsystems.com to see the products that continue to win industry acclaim among contractors worldwide. Jackson Systems, controls done right. Hey guys, welcome back to The Tradesman. I am very happy to announce that I have been busting my buns for several months here, doing podcasts for HVAC Shop Talk, even before that, The Cowboys and Tradesman. And I'm happy to say that I finally got to order some new audio gear it should be coming in this week. So I'm very excited about that. I've been using a mic, which is called a condenser mic. And I found out after I started my podcast that that might not be the best mic for it. Everybody else has these dynamic mics that are called ATR 2100s. You'll see all the guys ranging from Ralph and the group over there on the BCR. A lot of them have the 2100. And I was so jealous. But I couldn't really justify spending the money because it has been tight and I'm making a transition over to podcasting. So I'd feel pretty bad taking money out of the family budget to put into microphone when I already have a microphone. It's just not as good. And the guys who know me know that if I know I can do something better or increase the quality of something, I'm going to want to do it. So I've been wanting this thing for a while now. That and a little separate recorder that I can take with me to interview people in person. Because I like to start doing that. If I actually get some success here, I'd like to be able to travel to other places and interview people as well. I think that would be a lot of fun. Me and, my wife have already, me and my wife have always thought about doing stuff like that. Being able to get out and do things. Still do interviews and hang out and see different places. It was pretty great. In fact, I got to meet a YouTuber for the second time the other day. Had lunch with Mr. Stephen Rarden. We had a really good time. A really good time. We ate at a nice country buffet called the Meadow Family Restaurant. It's in a small town in between me and Stephen. So I live in Willard, which basically we'll call that Wilmington, North Carolina. And Stephen lives up near Raleigh. So in between is the mile marker 340 on the interstate. So that's where the Meadow Family Restaurant is at. So we got off and ate there. It was great. We talked the whole time. Had a good time. And I hope we get to do it again. Steven just started a brand new business. We discussed having an interview here on The Tradesman, which I'm sure we'll do at some point. I do believe he's appearing on a different podcast pretty soon. So I'll probably give it a little bit of time since you don't want to have Sam guy on like 20 times in a row. Unless his name is Bergman. So, what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about duct issues. We talked about duct work a little bit last time. We're going to talk about a little bit more. Let's talk about four things that cause issues in ductwork. Now these four things are just issues that decrease airflow, that increase static, they're not good for the flow of air through a duct system. Just four random things just to look out for. First one, a bullhead T. What does that mean? You ever seen a T fitting? It's exactly like the letter looks. You have air going into it and it's splitting in two different directions most of the time. The problem with that is it's very hard to get air through there in a nice fluid motion because basically you have it deadheading and splitting into two different routes. A better way to do that, there's a couple different ways. You can use a Y. A Y has a more gentle, fluid motion to it. A lot of times we used to put a Y if it were round or square. And then you can make another 45 degree fitting just to make it a little bit easier for turning. I'll go ahead and lump in number four with this, which is turning vanes. You would be very surprised, those of you who have ductilators, total effective length charts, look up what a fitting is with and without turning vanes. It makes a world of difference. And all turning vanes are, are little devices inside the ductwork to steer the air. It's really simple stuff, but it makes a world of difference. Think of air like any other fluid, like water, just imagine it'd be easier to flow if you have more fluid turns. Like the difference between a short radius and long radius copper elbow. 
just easier to go through that long radius. Just like when we had dryer venting duct work, and you have a certain amount of duct you can use, and you have to add up each elbow in 45 as a TEL or total equivalent length, you have to add a certain amount for those fittings. For a 45, we used to add 5 feet. For a 90, you used to add 10 feet. And they would come out with these long sweep 90s that were only 5 feet because it was easier. The more gradual the turn is, the easier it is to make the turn. That's why instead of a bullhead T, you want to use something like a Y or at least something with turning vanes in it. Even if it's a sharp bullhead, you could add some turning vanes to it. So let's talk about some other stuff. Supply trunks. We're not going to talk about sizing. We're going to get a whole lot more information on this. We're just going to take it little bits at a time. So it's easy to handle. Supply trunks that do not reduce. Most duct systems I deal with are reducing duct systems. Those of you who have followed me on YouTube for the last several years have seen I like to run round metal trunks 95% of the time. Those metal trunks, if they have any distance on them, because sometimes you'll have a plenum that's four, eight foot long that doesn't reduce because it's so short. There's no point in reducing. If you have a duct system that's like 40 or 50 feet long, you have to reduce that duct or the pressure is going to drop in the duct and the airflow will not be uniform. Think about it. You have a duct. Let's say it's 20 inches round on a four ton system. You take two 10 inch saddle takeoffs off of that duct. If each one of those 10 inch saddle takeoffs, we're going to arbitrarily give it a CFM amount, so don't worry about that part. Let's say each one of those 10 inch takeoffs is 300 CFM. That's 600 CFM. We have a four ton machine, and that's a nominal 1600 CFM. We're already down to 1,000, which is the equivalent of a two and a half ton unit. So now that we have the equivalent of a two and a half ton unit, which is 1,000 CFM, if you don't reduce that duct, the pressure is going to drop in that duct, the airspeed is going to slow, and you won't have uniform airflow. So think about it. You may reduce that 20 to 16, and that's round size, because that's more befitting a two and a half ton unit. You'll want to see that sort of thing in any duct system of length. In my opinion, if it gets above 10 foot long, you're going to end up having to reduce it to keep the airflow uniform. You're going to have a difficult time if you have a 20 30 foot duct system, it doesn't reduce. It has to be designed to keep a steady pressure and flow, or it's just not going to work, especially on the outer edges of the duct system. You're not going to get any airflow. And your runs closer will be out of whack compared to those far away duct runs. Another thing that I see a whole lot, and keep it in mind, guys, as I've come up, I've done all this stuff too. So all this wrong crap that I'm talking about is stuff that I've done. So if you're sitting here like, well, what makes you so professional. Well, nothing. I screwed a bunch of stuff up and learned from it. That's what I did. I'm just helping you guys out so you don't have to screw up first. You can just learn it. Plenums with one tap. If you have air handler boxes, they're very popular. Johnstone sells them. Other supply house sells them. We used to buy Goodman units by the droves. And they'd sell 17 and a half by 21 boxes or 15 and a half by 21 boxes. Because back in the day, the air handlers were pretty small. You put one on the front and one on the back. I remember I did a job where I put one on the front and one on the back. It was up in an attic, a big, spacious attic. And I brought taps off the top of both of those boxes. The inspector came to the job and I met him. He's like, what, what is this? It's my duck system. I was very proud. I was expecting some sort of trophy or a medal. He looked at me and said, why would you put a plenum, stock duck plenum, on the front of something and put a takeoff off the top? Why would you not use a squared around with an elbow? I'm like, I don't know. Think about the difference there. The same as the bullhead T. You're going to put a plenum on. It's basically a square. You're going to fit to the front of an air handler or a coil, depending on what you're working on. A lot of time for me, it's, it's air handler because we're a heat pump land. You put that plenum on and put a collar on the top of it. So basically all that air is deadheading against the end of that plenum and then being forced by pressure up to the top. Just imagine water. Imagine how much more difficult that is than just putting a squared around with an elbow where it's directed in a fluid 
seamless manner up to the rest of the ductwork, which I probably had a deadhead T up there as well. Every bit that you decrease on the total effective length makes it easier to get the proper amount of air in a system. It doesn't guarantee you're going to get the proper amount of air in a system because you still have to set the blower correctly, especially on an older system. Newer systems that are communicating or have variable speed might be a little bit easier to set depending on the dip switch arrangements, but you still have to have things set up properly. You have to have sized the duct correctly. It doesn't matter how fluid your duct system is if it's five sizes too small. If you put a five ton system in and decide to run a 14 inch duct off the front of it and it's a 20 foot duct system and you have nice fluid motions, it doesn't matter because it's way too small. It's like all the guys out there that run a nice flex to a five ton unit, but it's 16. It's way too small, and plus it's flex, which we'll talk about later. Flex has a higher friction rate than other ducts, because just imagine the inside of it. Metal ducts are smooth, flex has all those ridges, it tends to be more of a squirrely pattern, because it is flexible. People tend to pinch it off with the straps. We'll talk about that more later. That was Duck Systems Part 2. Hope you guys liked it. Stick around for more information. From me, I'm Zach, and I am the Tradesman. Guys that have listened to us at HVAC Shop Talk for a while have heard us talk about getting a free ZoomLock toolkit with the purchase of a certain amount of ZoomLock flame-free refrigerant fittings. Well, that's true. If you purchase 350 of the flame-free ZoomLock fittings, you can get a free tool with that. But what you might not know is if you go to the ZoomLock Roadshow and make that purchase, you can get it for 300 ZoomLock flame-free refrigerant fittings. That's quite a deal, guys. Go to ZoomLockRoadshow.com and find out where that truck's at so you can flag it down and get your ZoomLock tool today. If you like the Tradesman Podcast, please check out my other podcast, HVAC Shop Talk. Also, both of these podcasts are on the Blue Collar Roots Network. There's a whole slew of other entertainment and information there if you go to BlueCollarRoots.com. So enjoy the podcast. And I will see you on the next one.